Speed. 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 Yeah, good idea. Good idea for a title. They should they should name it Speed. We've blown up elevator shafts. I had buses going at 100 miles an hour. Had uh, window washing things come crashing into housing shed. Today we're going to blow up a parking lot. Just another day in Hollywood, I guess. <laughs> we're using basically 12 buses for one picture bus that we see in the movie. We had two exterior buses that were used only for exterior photography. A couple to blow up. A couple of the buses are interior buses where we have lighting on the top and we're towing a generator from behind. One of which was the Pope Mobile. Which is a bus that has no windshield in the front and then they would have a platform built in front of it and then they could place cameras. So it had an enclosed Perspex a box attached to the front where the camera crews would work and uh, so it was affectionately dubbed the Pope Mobile by the crew. One to jump, one to go on two wheels. A specially made bus with hydraulics where, it, where a, a wheel comes down and it tilts over and goes on its side. Uh, two stunt buses which were used for all the action sequences and hitting cars and things like that. We had various carcass buses. We had the process bus behind us. I might have forgotten a few along the way. So they, they all were, were unique uh, to their function. So the interior buses we had, like, you know, to make, it, to make it totally believable that Sandy was driving the bus, I want to really see her driving the bus. And to do that, we had to find positions and places in the bus we could, you know, locate a blind driver. And the driver was on top of the bus, and then Sandra would drive. But sometimes it had to be by behind the second row of passengers. So, you know, in, in any kind of complicated picture like this, especially when this bus has to do so many different things, you need a number of different buses to accomplish all the things that one needs to accomplish to, to you know, work in the story as it is. And I think, you know, I think what we could do now, because I think the kids, it's just before they reach the turn, I think you should be people, we're going to tip over, I'm sure, you know, I think... Right before we hit the turn? Yeah, but when you get into the turn, and, and you're going to you're gonna try to match it again with your feet right. this way. Just say it twice, I mean, just say it once um, I'm serious! I'm asking these serious yeah. questions. I didn't want to get people bored with the bus too quickly, you know, because if you're in, in, in a bus for that long of a movie, it's pretty dangerous. And I used an extremely movable camera and multiple cameras all the time and with, with longer lenses. So I revealed pieces of the bus, you know, one a little, little bit at a time by being close most of the time. And once in a while you, you go to a wider angle or a movable wide angle, never stay on it too long. It always became it stayed interesting. That was really important because you, you know, otherwise it would be you can all shoot forward, you can shoot back, how, how many positions can you have in a bus? Jan will just put a camera anywhere and, and, and it's, it's amazing what he's able to do in that respect. You know, he doesn't want the camera tied down, he wants freedom, he wants to move around, and I'm seeing that. It's, you know, and he's, he's extreme. Ready, and crash! Just, just turn around. Just turn around, ladies and gentlemen, Jan de Bon! <laughs> ladies and gentlemen! What are we into? In the last month and a half, Jan de Bon, has been taking the camera. He's in the fire. Well, Jan doesn't just operate sometimes. He, he also uh, will pull focus as well. And uh, he, he, he does a lot of things on, on a movie. Well, I almost had to because those buses, they have windows everywhere. So we couldn't, I mean, we, we had 15 actors in there. And a lot, of, a lot of the time we saw those actors in the shots. So we had no crew, the crew had to, I mean, where are you gonna put them all, you know? So we had the sound mixer in there, the script girl a camera operator, and there was no space. There was no space for me to be, so the only way I could uh, do it myself, and I had to cut off and have to do it on my own slate because there was no, no, no position for the, for the clapper loader. I had to do a lot of those things for myself. So that's you know, the, the main reason that I had to really you know, say, OK, guys, you stay in the truck, you stay at, you stay at the camera truck, I'll, I'll operate because I don't, so I could look at the actors.
He's, he's very particular about how he wanted this particular uh, movie to look. The camera's always moving in, in, a, in a real precise way just to keep uh, everything edgy. And, uh, and I think sometimes it's easier for him, you know, just to say, okay, I'll just take care of this one and, uh, you know, and do it. So it's not because anybody doesn't know how to do it, but it's more because he knows exactly what he wants. And, and I think given some of our time constraints, it was easier for him to just do it than, uh, you know, than, than, than show somebody else what he wanted. Bang, 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 bang! Oh, fuck, he fell off. <laughs> Are you okay? He's a bang at every party. I need to let it go. Let it go. Did you see her? She's gonna understand this. Oh, yeah. We were really extremely lucky that LA you know, uh, where they haven't built freeways in a long, long time, had still one unfinished freeway, the Century Freeway. And they were willing to uh, have us film there as long as we would never be in their way. We were able to get permission to shoot for the entire last month of the freeway's construction, which meant operationally for us, we, we had to move almost every other day in order to find a, a piece of the freeway where, where the construction crews were, were not working, where we could shoot and we had continuity problems because every day we'd come back to work and they would have put fences up. So we were constantly struggling with the, the changing look of the freeway. Like the very first day we started filming, I was gonna say, somebody said, hey, there's no lines on the freeway, what happened? I know it's realized that the freeways have lines, so we quickly had to paint lines on the freeway and all the things. So we helped them actually finishing the freeway, which was kind of funny, so that they got it done in time. As a matter of fact, it opened five days after we finished. I mean, without, that, without the central freeway, it would have been almost impossible. If we had not had that freeway, I think it would have cost a great deal of money and effort to take the company uh, to, to some other state in order to uh, find a freeway that we could get that much cooperation on. Talking to someone, having some coffee, but no.